this entitled family are completely self-absorbed and ruining everyone's day at this pizza place. So this clever man decides to plan some petty revenge to put a stop to their entitlement. Happy birthday if today's your birthday and on with the revamped show. This was many years ago, back when Barney the Dinosaur was at his peak popularity. So there I was, on a long drive across country. I was taking the scenic route, and there was this huge wreck on this little state highway. Traffic was being turned around, and the alternate route, according to my GPS, was pretty long. In lieu of taking the long detour, I decided to track back a few miles and have a nice, quiet, sit-down lunch. While the wreck cleared, I see a popular chain pizza restaurant. I pull into the parking lot. It's an early Early Saturday afternoon between lunch and dinner. The pizza buffet is an all day thing at this restaurant. I order the buffet and sit down for a nice lunch. There is a jukebox right next to my booth. Two minutes later, in comes a bunch of kids from a soccer game and their parents in tow. This was a group of, can I speak to your manager mums, if I ever saw one. I guess they won because they were all in great spirits. The kids were recounting their exploits on the soccer field and how much fun they had. Lots of positive energy. Good stuff brightened my day. Anyway, the team occupied a whole bunch of tables and proceeded to order the buffet. Smart call. As soon as the waitress went to go get their drinks, kids went to get pizza, but the mum told them to stop. The mums took every single pizza, I say again, every single pizza off the buffet and put them on their tables. Okay, no problem. I go to the counter and ask if they'll put a few more pizzas so I can have a slice or two. I see that look. You know the look. The look of complete and utter exhaustion and defeat of the staff behind the counter. I gave them back the, okay, I feel you friend, no worries. I get it, small town. This is typical behavior for this gang of mums. Sorry you have to deal with this. And the look I get back is, thanks for not making a deal. We will try and get some pizzas out pretty quick. Having been in their position before, I absolutely understood. My first mistake was this. I said, pardon me ladies, you took every slice of every pizza. Could I just get a slice or two? There were lots of slices on their table. Easily enough for everyone there to have a few slices. They looked at me like I just insulted their parents and their livelihood. Besides the exasperated sighs and eye rolling, I got a, just go sit down and they will bring some more out. Besides, we eat here all the time. And then some other snide comments and such. I decided to brush it off and wait for the pizzas to come out. The kids were still wound up from the win and running around the place, but it was okay. Kids are kids. Just to restate, the kids were great. It was the parents that were generally nasty. I decide to read a paper while I waited. Then the comments start coming. Mary, how's your pizza? Oh, really good. How is yours, Stacy? So good. How is the pizza, kids? Does everyone have enough? Okay, cool. Trying to get a rise out of me. I ignored them and this irritated them a bit. Their first mistake was this. One of the kids said something about Barney. One of the mums quickly changed the subject. Then they all had a minor conversation about how much they hated that purple dinosaur and how much they hated all the associated songs. Songs. Did I mention the jukebox? I go to the counter and tell the cashier that I'm just going to go without my pizza and may I please have a to-go cup drink. Pretty sure you don't get to-go cups for drinks, but we were all on the same sheet of music. I pay my bill and tip my server. I take a nice crispy $5 bill out and put it in the jukebox. There were three or four Barney songs on there. I selected each song a few times. Then I turned around and gave a thumbs up and shouted, Great game, y'all. Congratulations on the win. This adrenalized the kids. A look of confusion flashed over the parents' faces. I could see the gears turning. Why is he being nice? What just happened? A matter of few short seconds later, the first Barney song queued up and started playing. The look of confusion morphed into venomous hate. One of them even called me an SOB in front of the kids. I just smiled and walked out as the kids screamed, Barney! And started singing. I did not get any pizza, but I did feast on the anger and hate of those parents that had to endure a chorus of Barney songs. I got a tuna salad sandwich at the gas station and took the detour, giggling all the way. An attack of a group of soccer mums can be a pretty terrifying thing. Probably wisest that he got out of there as soon as he could. It's frustrating that they happen to be regulars because they're probably right. They know if it's a small town that the pizza place probably needs their business. At what point if you're the pizza owner do you go, eh, how much is it really worth having these people here? Who's to say maybe they've lost more customers because people didn't want to eat with the mums there. 
Hello Voicey. Today I finally have a revenge story on the entitled mum who harasses me about the Spider-Man cupcakes. She still harasses me when she sees me, but I think after this stunt I pulled, she might not. So quick little backstory, just in case. I was buying myself a sweet in the store when a woman with her child began harassing me. She said I was a fat and gross brony because I had a My Little Pony shirt on at the time. Oh, and a quick note, reason why she knew what a brony was is because there are a lot in my town. Anyway, I ran away from her, and that's the backstory. Ever since then, when she spots me in the store, she starts a fight. Usually, it's calling me a pervert. I have no idea why. Or to call me a fat slob who ruined her son's happiness because I was too fat and greedy and didn't share. It's gotten emotionally draining at this point. However, a light shined in the darkness, and it was called the YouTube comments. I saw Voicey had put my story up in a video, thanks Voicey, and I saw the comments. There were so many suggestions on what to do with this lady, so she would leave me alone. I decided I would act on one of them. Today would be the day she would finally leave me alone. I dressed in all the fandoms this lady harassed me about. She made fun of me for My Little Pony, Five Nights at Freddy's, and Undertale. So I wore all of those just to add some extra annoyance to her. I wore my Undertale shirt, my Five Nights at Freddy's hoodie, and my pony necklace and went to the store. I looked around and saw her by the fruits. So I went to the cupcake stand and grabbed one. I grabbed a cupcake box that had only one beautifully decorated one in it. It was one of those single assorted ones. There was a bunch of them, but it didn't seem to matter how many there were. She would always harass me about them. I placed it in my cart and slowly went to pay for it. As I bought it, she spotted me and made her way towards me. She had this fiery, angry look in her eyes. I made my way to the door and stopped. She came storming up to me, leaving her cart behind, and started her tirade. You're buying more sweets? Gosh, you're such a slob. Why don't you give that to someone who actually needs the calories? Look lady, I'm tired of you constantly harassing me over those cupcakes. That was nearly a month ago. I don't care how long ago it was, you still didn't learn anything. She noticed my clothing choice of the day and made a disgusted grunt. <sighs> oh my gosh, what the heck is wrong with you? Look who's talking. I'm allowed to wear whatever I want, and being a fan of all these isn't gross or wrong. Stop harassing me, please. I'm not harassing you. I'm merely trying to fix a problem. You keep taking away the sweets. I want to buy my son. And you keep acting so rudely towards me, running away or just back talking to me. You listen to me, you fat slob. You give me that cupcake right now. You don't need the calories and you should be thanking me. I'm just trying to save your weight. She had the most disgustingly smug look on her face as she held her hand out to me. Now I decided to put my revenge into action. Oh, I'm sorry. I never understood your intentions before. Hold on a second. I picked up the single cupcake and before she could say anything, I licked all the frosting off. I licked it like it was the best tasting popsicle I've ever eaten. Boy, you should have seen her face. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen. Her eyes grew wide and her jaw almost hit the ground. I put the cupcake, now frostingless, back into its little box and put the box in her hand. There, since you wanted it so badly, I took care of the extra calories for you. Her look of shock turned into disgust and anger. Ooh, oh my gosh, what is wrong with you? Well, like you said before, I'm a fat disgusting brony, so I just couldn't help myself. I grinned at her and started to walk away. Then I stopped right at the door and said, oh, by the way, those Spider-Man cupcakes were delicious. You were on my mind every time I took a bite. Then I left. She still stood there with the frostingless cupcake in her hand, staring at me like she had just been slapped in the face. It was very satisfying. I don't think she will bother me anymore. I moved into a nice apartment complex two years ago. No problems the first year. However, during the second summer, a family with free range kids moved in. Despite having no scooters or bike signs on the gates of the complex, I didn't really have a problem with them in the beginning since they kept it to the parking lot. But then they began to ride their scooters through the hallways between apartment complexes, and I mean they would ride them as fast as they possibly could. After almost getting hit by them multiple times, since the complex hallways have blind corners, I approached the kids first and politely said that while I'm happy they're playing outside, to please keep it to the parking lot. This worked for about a week, but then got worse, to the point of them shouting while doing laps around the building. The shouts are amplified in the hallways. I remind the kids again, and it works for another week. The process repeats 
communicates itself, so I ask to speak with the parents. The kids refuse, so I call the homeowner association. HOA says they can't do anything without proof. A few days later, I hear them outside again and look to see that an SUV owned by the mother is outside finally. I approach her with a smile on my face and attempt to explain the situation to her. I work at home, so I need distractions to be minimum. I told her I didn't have a problem with the kids in the parking lot. We have two massive parking lots here, but to stay away from the apartment always, since they didn't even live in the same building. Yes, they did not live in the same building they were riding and shouting through the halls in. Her excuse was that kids will be kids. I take out my phone to get a picture of the SUV so the HOA can trace it since they have to register vehicles with them and they are attached to our units. Also, I had the proof of the kids riding scooters so it wasn't just her word versus mine. She then called me a few names and then threatened to call police. I ignore her, reported her to the HOA for being a nuisance and her children for disobeying the rules. HOA said they sent a warning notice to her for her kids to not do it again. It's quiet for a few weeks but kids are back at it again. HOA sends them a second notice with a warning that a $250 fine will be attached with a third warning. I haven't seen or heard from her kids in a couple of weeks but she shoots me dirty looks each time we see each other. I just smile and wave. The icing on the cake? Her unit is next to the pool, which is on the way to the parking lot, so I make sure to fling the gate wide open each time I head out to the parking lot. I just assumed most parents see kids as like an extension of their own behavior in a lot of ways, which is why when there's a kid throwing a tantrum in the shopping center, the parent feels super embarrassed. You know, they're not even the one throwing the tantrum, but it's like, eh, because I brought my kid here, that's why everyone's hearing this noise. What is it about the wiring of the brain of an EP that they don't have that connection? That they're like, yeah, yeah, the kid is a different person. I guess I'm their parent and give them food, but I don't see myself as having any responsibility for their actions. They can't even feign responsibility. Oh, my kid's doing that? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we'll try and do something about it. Oh, they just flat out don't care. Back when I was a teenager, my aunt would ask me to babysit her kids. It didn't happen often, but I really didn't mind, as long as she bought me pizza. And her two kids were well behaved. Anyway, she was a divorcee, and after a couple of years, she remarried. His two kids were alright as well, and I didn't mind babysitting for them when they asked me to, about three months after their wedding. This is when it starts going downhill. Firstly, no pizza. Second, they came home three hours later than they said they would, and didn't give me a lift home. I'm 16 at this point and a very big guy, so no worries walking home. But it was about 2 a.m. in the morning. Then they started to take advantage. Almost every week, they wanted me to look after their kids for no pay and would get extremely pissy about it if I refused, often having a go at my mother, who would cry. I hated that. Fine. So they called me to look after their kids so they could go and do their regular, we'll be home by 10, but we mean 1 a.m. Okie dokie. I rocked up. Sure enough, no food, aside from the kids' dinner. I raided their fridge. Then at about midnight, I woke the kids up, took them into the lounge, and put on a video. They were a little confused, but excited to be up at that time. I then gave each of them a can of Red Bull and a packet of lollies. About 20 minutes later, the parents showed up, and I left. They never asked me to babysit for them again. Apparently, they shouted at my mother, and dad told me off but he couldn't stop laughing, so I wasn't in too much trouble. Now, pizza is an internationally accepted currency, so when they stop giving him pizza, it's basically like they stopped paying for him to do his job. I'm glad he found a clever way to get out of it. That is the classic way you get out of any job though. Not that I advocate that. You just do a bad result and then you're never asked to do it again. When I was young, maybe only a few years old, my dad was a forester and my mum was a housewife. She loved us, all four of us, but she loathed the constant cleaning. The thing that annoyed her the most, however, was cleaning up after my dad. He would come home after an eight hour shift, covered in sawdust that had solidified into a heavy paste and sweat. He would pull off his heavy boots and peel off his socks and toss them on the floor. And my mum hated it. She eventually got tired of it and threatened to nail them to the the floor and my dad would promise to do better but would inevitably go back to the same routine. My mum devised a plan. She waited until he went to change and she nailed his socks to the floor and waited. My dad eventually attempted to pick the disgusting socks up. He laughed so hard when he realized. I'd like to say that he never did it again but he's not perfect. However, all that changed when he had an accident at work and he had to stay home. My mum got a job as a contractor and would come home sweaty and exhausted and throw her socks 
rocks on the floor. Dad nailed them to the floor. My mum still roars with laughter when she tells the story. It's been over 20 years and I think that's what a darn good marriage is all about. One of the most important things in a relationship is conflict resolution. Two people put together are always going to have different things they want and different expectations. Every single relationship will have it. So you'll never find a perfect person, but you can find somebody who's kind and generous and is willing to have enough patience to work through with you with the areas of conflict that you have in your relationship. It's really sweet to see that with this couple, yes, they did things that got on each other's nerves, but they even had a little bit of fun with it. And ultimately, that's what's important in a relationship is choosing to continually connect with the other person, even when there's areas of conflict. You get that right and you'll have a long lasting happy relationship. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey veterans, I'll see you in the next one.